We're going to look at a mind-reading computer. Uh, slightly more impressively even, a mind-reading JavaScript. So it requires uh, the computer to read my mind about a card in this very special deck of cards. They are weird pack, and apologies to the viewers, that's my fault for bringing the wrong kind of cards along, but they are just playing cards, they're just a funny shape. I'll ask you to select five cards. Just say stop and I'll select the card. Uh, that one. This one. Yeah, and now that one. This one. And then next three. One, two, and three. So that should give us uh, five cards here. Now I am going to look at the cards um, because I need to channel it to my computer. Okay. Um, and it's going to then read my mind. And to make sure that there's no funny business going on, I'm going to ask you, Sean, to enter the cards into the computer and to read out the result. So I'm going to put the cards on the table and then I will ask you to enter this onto the computer. Cool, well, let's, let's have a look then. Here's a computer. The first card to enter is the three of spades. The next card is the two of clubs. That's already there. Uh, the next card is the king of hearts. And the final card is the Three of Hearts. And now I'm channeling my psychic power. All right, now press Read My Mind. Okay, hang on. Five of Spades. The big moment then, come on. Here we go. It read my mind. Okay, all right. What's the trick? Yeah, I've put a recording device um, secretly in my ear and I can click a number of times and the computer will count. No, none of that is going on. Um, of course, there was some funny business going on when I was looking at the cards and I didn't put them down in the order I received them. I put them down in a very specific order. If you want to have a challenge, go through the JavaScript yourself first and try to figure out what the funny business is. See if you can figure out how the computer reads my mind. Um, but for those of you that want me to walk you through it, um, let's do that right now, or if you just want to verify your solution. The first thing I did was I found out whether or not there was a pair of cards that had the same suit. In this case, there were two pairs of cards that happened to have the same suit. Because there's four suits, but five cards, there will always be at least one pair of cards that will have the same suit. This is also known as the pigeonhole principle in computer science because we need to give it a fancy name for a simple principle. So I had a choice here. I, I just went for this pair. I could have gone for this pair and, and put down a different order, but I went for this. Then I noticed that if you have two cards of the same suit, they will never be more than a distance six apart from each other if we allow rolling through the end. So for example, the king and the three have the ace is one higher than the king, but then the two is two higher than the king, and then the three is three higher than the king, so they're actually three apart. But in this case, it's a lot simpler. These two cards are two apart. I always put the lower one of the two down, and the higher one is hidden. So that means that now, if I know that it's a spade, and I know that this card is one, two, three, four, five, or six higher than this card, because there's always a gap of at most six between them. Can I use these three cards to denote a number between one and six? I think the answer is yes. <laughs> well, the answer is yes, yes. <laughs> because look at this. This is the first combination. This is the second combination. This is the third combination. Fourth combination. Fifth combination. And this is combination number six. What I've done was I've put the three down, I've selected it because the five is of the same suit, and I now want to denote the number two. So the number two is the second combination, of course. So we put the lowest card in front, then the highest in the middle, and then the middle one at the end. So because there's six combinations, we can always do this. Now, if you want to do this trick yourself, and you want to have a quick way of referencing these um, six combinations and knowing immediately by looking at it which is which, um, you can assign each of these cards um, a number zero, one, or two. So the lowest card will get the number zero, the middle card will get the number one, and the highest card will get the number two. 
and then we can read out what is down there as a three digit number. So this is 12, 0, 1, 2. The next number is 21, 0, 2, 1. Now 21 is the next highest number in that order. The next highest number would be 102. So we make 100, so that's a 1 in front, then the 0, then the 2. The next lowest number is 120, which is the fourth combination. Then we have to have numbers in the 200s. The lowest number in the 200s is 100, 201. And then finally, 210 is the highest possible number, so that's combination 6. And we can do this for every deck of cards. But what if some of those cards are the same number? You know, you've got two of the same. Yeah, if two, two cards have the same value, um, for example, instead of this three, we have, instead of this two, we have the number three. Now we have two threes. Well, there's one system that um, is often used for ranking the suits in the deck, uh, which is called the chased sin um, system. And the reason it's called that is because it contains the letters C, H, S, and D. So C stands for clubs, is the lowest, then hearts, then S for spades, and finally the D for diamonds. So that means that the diamonds is higher than the hearts. And that still allows us to then have these various combinations. Great, I'm off to Vegas. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Read everyone's mind. Two billion seconds starting from 1970. If we go roughly 2 billion seconds before Epoch, we will go to Friday the 13th December 1901. So that means that any... There's obviously a lot of problems with it, right? First of all, the networks are still not quite high resolution enough to deal with you know, 1080 and 4K video. 